Welcome back. Uh, this week, we are gonna be mucking stalls out. I've kind of been reluctant to do it because this year, man, winter has just been, well, crazy. We're uh, mid-May right now, and the next five days, I believe, are gonna be right around 50 degrees uh, for the high and 34, 35 for the low. But it is what it is, so that's why I haven't really cleaned out the stalls yet. So I've had a couple people ask what this situation is all about. It's called Deep Litter Method. So we'll start in October, November, maybe a little earlier than that, depending on the year. We'll put down a layer of hay. We use hay as bedding, not straw. I know straw doesn't absorb, blah, 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 blah. Never liked it. Uh, so we use hay, which is actually an added benefit to Deep Litter Method because the hay will actually break down more, kick off more heat as it does. Hay is grass, let's put it that way. There are varieties of hay uh, mixes. For instance, we generally feed our goats uh, an alfalfa slash grass mix. There's just standard grass hay that whatever's grown in the field, that's what they're... Yes, it's a wheelbarrow. Excuse me, excuse me, boozy booze. My lovely, hi. Yes, yes is the answer. They will be trying to knock over the wheelbarrow the entire time I'm doing this. My cart is down. I'll shoot a video of that and pop it in here. So this is the cart. Uh, it's made by Groundworks, or Groundwork. If you can see that in there or not. This bearing right here. So there's your bearing, looks like that. Just fell out. Also this year it's so freaking wet I couldn't use the cart anyway. So I'll usually attach the cart to my mower. I'll drive it over here, fill that up, drive it back over, dump it in the compost pile. Uh, and then the compost will go in the garden. We're not even doing the garden this year, it's too late. We didn't get ahead of it and now, I mean we could plant some stuff, we could go buy a bunch of plants and plant, but it would take a lot of work to get the garden up and running that I don't have time to do right now. So anywho, I ramble as I do. So deep litter method, we'll put down a layer of hay and then this lovely lady will come through and bless it with some poop. <laughs> she hasn't been very i mean if you watch my other videos and you'll see how lovey she normally is she's always coming over for pets but since she's had the babes she's not been very lovey she's been concentrating on them so they're getting close to weaning age now and she's coming back around to get her pets a mama all right i love you move on can you go over there somewhere thank you don't knock over my wheelbarrow i know you want to so deep litter thin layer of hay and then the goat will come in and they'll poop on that. And they'll put another layer of hay down and they'll poop on that. Another layer, poop, so on and so forth. So we'll do that throughout the cold months. Uh, we'll just keep adding to it, let it build. And then after kidding season, once the kids are weaned right around, it depends on the year. Generally, I've had it done by now and it's cleaned out and it's gone. It's just been so cold. And about a week, it's supposed to be closer to average, which for right now, this time of year, is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. But I mean, we've already had 70 and 80 degree days and then boom, right back to cold blast. So how deep litter method works and there's lots of videos out there on YouTube you can go explore different methods that other people use you put the hay down the goat poops that starts breaking down there's bacteria and everything in the world we all know that uh, the poop breaks down the hay the hay breaks down uh, they urinate in it as well which adds a little bit of moisture and that moisture content will help kick off bacteria growth breaking down hay breaking down poop all that breakdown kicks off heat we have eight feet wide by 32 feet long another eight 16 feet there and then we have this stall here, which is eight by eight. Hold on, let me do some quick math. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times eight feet long is 56 linear feet by eight feet deep. Eight times 56, 448 square feet of heat kicking up off the floor. Essentially free, I guess nothing's free. We had to feed the goats to make them poop. Let's not get too complicated. There was only about one day or two days this year that this barn fell below 32 degrees. We don't have insulation on the walls. We don't have any kind of interior blocking of the exterior wall, uh, which is metal, which, you know, it's cold outside, you have a metal wall, cold's gonna transfer right in, no problem. This winter was a, an actual real Ohio winter. To be able to have this barn never fall below freezing with just poop and hay, can't argue with that. Some of you have also commented on what I call the poo bunkers. So I have this mound of hay right here. If you remember seeing back in some of my videos during winter, um, there were holes in it and these buckets set down inside there. Now I had the same thing built up all the way around this bucket. I put a little layer of hay down on the floor to keep the metal from touching the actual concrete. And then in the morning when I come in, I'll clean up this hay. Okay, I'll sweep the top off of this. Um, if you sweep it gently, you'll get mostly hay and the poo will stay. And then I'll just, well, hello. I don't know why you're so calm and your sister is so crazy. Look at this.
Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. We gonna do jump on me head again. <laughs> I okay. Oh, don't fall. So careful, careful. So, like I was saying, I'll scrape up the poop. I'll shove it all around that container, and I'll just keep building up. And before the really cold January, February gets in, I'll have poo bunker. Hi. So before the really cold months get in, I'll have a poo bunker all the way to the height of this is about 12 inches and all the way surrounding it. And it's just kicking off heat. And even inside of this metal bucket in the middle of January, February, I had that freeze over twice and it wasn't very thick. It was just a thin layer of ice on top. Now we've had a couple colder years where it was freezing over <clears throat> and these just stay in here. That's why they're dirty. All right, watch this, swash this up a little bit. See the white cloudiness in there, salt water. So I'll fill those bottles with salt water, pop those bottles in the tank, let them float around and bob around in there. The goats come to get a drink, they'll move the bottle around. Since the salt water freezes at a lower temperature with the goats knocking the bottles around in there regularly, it keeps the surface from being able to freeze over. Because once the surface freezes over, then it starts freezing down. Then you're bashing ice out of there every day, having to refill the thing every day. We refill on a regular basis, but if there's a day I don't have to carry, you know, 10, 15 gallons of water from the house, that's a good day. Which is also why I strategically place this outside poo bunker right here. As you see, these buckets here are setting right at the lip of the roof. They collect rainwater. It's been so rainy this week that I haven't had to carry water over here for, I don't think once this week. It's been enough drizzly rain to fill these buckets and then I'll dump those off into here and let the rain just keep filling them back up. Do you feel the need to be up there? Oh, you can't be up there. There's food up there. All right, you bugger, come on. No, no. Don't freak out on me. All right, all right, all right, go. Get out of here. Get out of here, crazy cakes. Go on, get. So also, when I start cleaning out stalls, I'll clean up this bucket area. I'm not even gonna show you that. Okay, I'll show you. Fine. This is my my throw and go pile of junk that I've been too lazy to carry to the house with me. So I thought I'd show you the pain in the butt that it actually is to get these cleaned out, but worth, I mean, worth every penny. Uh, the goats are warm. Nobody freezes to death, which obviously I think we can all agree is good. Um, no, no. No, get out of there. Get, go on, get. You know, the goats have been walking on this since October, probably November, and it just smash and smash. And I walk on it, birthing stalls, kidding. So it's just, it's just super compact. What I normally do is just have a go at how many can I get done in one day. But this year with the, with the YouTube channel, you guys are awesome, by the way. The tiny snowball that we've been rolling is starting to kind of escalate. I know some of you are friends and I said, go subscribe to my channel and you did. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so we're, we're growing. Don't know where I was going because the YouTube channel, the soap business is just insane. You guys already know. Um, I hate to keep talking about it like I'm complaining because I'm not. It's amazing. I love it. So the soap business, we go looking for shows. We reach out to people who are hosting the shows. We show them our products. Are we a fit for your show? Would you like to have us? They get back to us. We do the show or we don't. But just this week alone, I've had two different people reach out to me and say, hey, we saw you at the show. We bought your product. We really like it. We want you to come to our show they're scalping to try to get good products into their shows look y'all I, <laughs> I get excited about so I'm just a small town guy and for somebody to reach out and be like we want your product at our show it's, it blows my mind. I've had a couple of nice comments in the last videos, like it's a feel good channel. So thank you for that. And it's a real feel or feels real. Just so you know, I'm just some nerdy little dude who's just loves goats. This is what we do. And I don't try to fluff anything. I do try to hide my dirty spots like this. I think maybe we all have those. My house isn't always clean. My barn's not always clean, but hope you guys enjoy it and just keep making videos. I love making videos. It's so much fun. But thanks everybody who's who's thinking that or feeling that or and, and telling me that because that means so much to me. It really, really does. It means so much to me that you feel that way about the channel. So I think where I was going with all of this is I used to clean out as many stalls as I could in one day. So I think with my current schedule, with the channel, the editing, the soap and everything else, I'll do one of these a day. And right now I'm stuck using a wheelbarrow. So I'm going to wheelbarrow this. We have plenty of compost and since we're not doing the garden this year I have a million holes that I need to fill in because I'm tired of mowing around them so I'm gonna start dumping this in holes uh, old drainage areas that have washed things like that so we try to use everything as best we can I thought I'd bring you out and show you the babies cleaning up the fence line which is fantastic hi miss cookie <laughs> good morning you got a nice spot in the Sun yes look at that face Like, 
All right. Here I am 30 minutes into tucking and haven't touched the stall yet. So we'll clean all the poo out and then I'm gonna use diatomaceous earth. We'll put that down, powder the floor with it and then we'll just put hay back in just in the house. This, what you can't see is, this is the second two by six up. So you're at almost eight inches deep. I'll just stop yipping and start cleaning. Get her done. Boy, I, I hate this pitchfork. It has too many tines on it. I'm gonna cut some off. There you go, that's a nice, solid piece of dirt. Hey that guys, just dry, dry dirt. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm gonna put all this out in that wash and there's hundreds of seeds in here from the hay. I don't know if those will be viable or not, but where I, let me just take you out there. Where I filled in the wash last year, this came to about right there and then it went downhill to that tree right there. I started filling in there, filled all of this in, and you can see there's no issue. Something's gonna grow. All right, so that's that. Have you watched new videos? Well, guess what? I gotta go over to the house and get the diatomaceous earth because I've forgotten it. Nobody's surprised by this. So that is what we use there. Diatomaceous red lake earth with calcium bentonite. This is what it's all good for. You can pause and read that if you want. It's good for everything. It's food grade so they can eat it. it looks like this. It moves like water. What we use it for is moisture control. It puts a nice barrier down on the ground to keep a little bit of the moisture away. We use it for mite control. You can dust the goat with it. That'll kill any body parasites that are on the outside. Some people actually feed it to their livestock for internal parasites. I got it on a spider once and it literally couldn't crawl. It just crunched up into a ball and died. So that's how I roll with it. Then I'm just gonna spread it around. And I'm gonna do a little bit just outside the door. Cause a little bit goes a very long way. So if there's any lice or mites on this floor, they're gonna die. So when I put new fresh bedding down, I won't have to worry about those climbing up through and getting to the goats. So now I'm just gonna, it's summer now. Well, <laughs> it's getting warmer now. We give them a nice fluffy bed inside the house there. So this is all just free range now. It's kind of nice when I do it like this because they'll lay in there at night and they'll come out of the stall to poop and pee. So they're not dirtying up the bedding nearly as much as they would in the winter. Hi boys, you guys taking naps? They're so adorable. There's no need to show you the next six. Now this is kind of what it's starting to look like now. Is that choice to make? Put more hay down in there or start cleaning out stalls. And I really don't want to add any more to it. I think that was seven or eight little barrel loads. <sighs> Unless I get my cart fixed, which I'm having trouble finding parts for. It's going to be all wheelbarrow loads. Anyway, thanks for watching. Go click all the buttons. Tell all your friends. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Bye. So this is a massive hole. There's actually an old drain tile that has washed away i don't know foot and a half of dirt there i assume it undercuts this heads into the creek and that's why this is a wash there's the end result of that filled in that whole area with one stall and i'll probably put a little bit more on top of that because this is going to settle really really bad 